I want to I want to talk about the the sort of like broad strokes of the text um, that we're covering. So there's four chapters. The first in the first chapter we talked about sort of fundamental things, right? Like voltage, current, resistance, voltage dividers, some of the basic elements like capacitors and inductors, basic terminology, right? And we analyzed some circuits, but we didn't have a very systematic approach. We just sort of wrote down some equations and tried to solve for stuff we wanted. Um, in chapter two, we got a little bit more methodical. Uh, we defined a sign convention, and we also defined our six steps, our methodology that resulted in a differential equation uh, uh, that, that described the dynamics of the circuit. And we uh, also talked about how to solve for those differential equations to find the response, right? And that was um, uh, a response that we described in terms of a transient part and a steady state part, right? So those were our two uh, uh, regions in the solution. Then we said, okay, um, we'll move on to chapter three. We're mainly going to consider sinusoidal inputs in chapter three, uh, which we'll describe in terms of phasers, in terms of complex numbers. We'll have this representation for them. And then uh, if we only care about steady state responses, we don't care about that transient initial part, we only care about the steady state, and you have a sinusoidal input, um, you can use this impedance method to solve for the output of the system. Um, and the big payoff is that you don't have to solve a differential equation, which is really nice. Uh, it's all algebraic, but you do have to deal with complex numbers, which aren't terrible, but they also are a bit of a pain to deal with. So that was the sort of uh, thing that we, uh, uh, we, we got rid of differential equations, but we paid two prices. The first price was we didn't get the transient response anymore. And the second is that we had to deal with complex numbers. So, um, so that was chapter three. And then chapter four was nonlinear and multiport elements, where we talked about four types of components that are really useful, transformers, diodes, MOSFETs, and op amps. And transformers were linear. They, took, they let us trade off voltage and current. Um, uh, but they only work for AC signals. Uh, we had diodes that only conduct current in one direction normally. Uh, uh, that's a good approximation of what a diode does. Uh, and then we had uh, MOSFETs, which our main use for is to drive power-hungry loads uh, uh, with a powerful constant source in concert with a, a not powerful variable source and using the MOSFET to, to sort of take those two good qualities uh, out, power and, and variability, and, and mating them. So that was the, the MOSFET um, usage that we focused on. And then op amps, using, so one of the things about the MOSFET that sucked is that it was very nonlinear. Um, op amps uh, are quite linear when we use feedback, right? When we use negative feedback, we got this nice linear uh, operation. And that linear operation means that uh, we can amplify signals without distorting the signals, um, which is huge uh, uh, and very important. So I, I might talk a little bit more about that towards the end. Um, but that's like broad brush strokes. That's what we did, right? Remember that when we use nonlinear components, one of the big differences is that we can't use impedance methods at all because they assume that you're using a, you have a linear system. So if you put a sinusoid into a linear system, remember you get out a sinusoid. Uh, the only things that change are the amplitude and the phase. And that's what phasers uh, and, and impedance methods sort of glom onto. It's like, oh, you only change the amplitude and, and the phase, uh, so we'll only keep track of those. <laughs> Um, but remember what happened when we put in a sinusoid to that, uh, uh, that diode circuit, that half 
uh, 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 rectifier circuit, half wave re rectifier. Remember, we put in a sinusoid, and then what came out was half a sinusoid, and then clipped, and it would be zero, and then like the hump again, and then zero. And that is not a sinusoid. So we put in a sinusoid, we don't get out of sinusoid. That is characteristic of a nonlinear system. And nonlinear systems um, uh, are more difficult to deal with in part because of that. We can't use impedance methods. Um, um, but we can return to chapter 2 methods, though, which uh, allow us to write differential equations and solve them. Uh, you might ha end up with a nonlinear differential equation. Um, but uh, at least you have an expression that describes the system. And you can use, like, MATLAB will help you solve a, uh, uh, find a numerical solution for, for such nonlinear systems. Or you can use piecewise linear approximations for nonlinear systems, which is also something we spent quite a bit of time discussing uh, in the last couple of weeks, right, where we use this method of assumed states. So piecewise linear approximations are nice. So, yeah, uh, those are our, like, that's broadly what we covered. Um, I know that there's a lot of details packed in, in here. Uh, so I am open to, so what I did earlier was I just sort of like w walked through and was like, remember this, remember that. Um, I can do that, or if you guys had a specific problem you wanted me to solve, I could do that. Yes. Yes. Are you going to post those solutions? Or I don't have solutions for most of those. I just kind of made them up because due to a request, um, somebody asked. Uh, I, I will give you a. I don't think I'm going to have time this weekend to do a lot of, of them. Um, so we've got a lot of other things happening this weekend. But I, I think that I can. Uh, uh, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot to try to maybe give you a couple of more solutions. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. Practice. Yeah, and if there was one in particular that you guys like, this one, like if you could do this one from the back of one of the chapters. Uh, and that would help us a lot. Like I, I could probably even record a video working through that problem if you want. And I, and I did have a, a, a question about homework four point five point five. Okay. I was just, uh, I was just con a bit confused on. This. I guess it's the way it looks, the way it's set up. For me, it was kind of. Like, I guess I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what, how it's flowing out. The, the down I think this is this one four point five point five. This guy. Yeah. Op amps here. Yeah. So let's take a look at this. We want to uh, simulate V out for input voltage. Yes. Yeah, there's an updated one, so please, uh, oh, okay. so the, the, the numbering is updated too, so please do uh, get the latest problem? copy. What? Does that mean there's more problems? There are more problems. I announced all of this on Slack, so no, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> hopefully you guys are, are watching that, because there are like, there are several new problems that were not there, so a week ago I posted this. I said, new problems. It was last weekend. New problems, new numbers for the problems, so make sure you download the latest version of those problems. Uh, so this is, yes, this is one of those problems. Um, I actually, I, I, I say simulation here, which is the wrong <laughs> word. Um, uh, we don't need to do, use a simulation. We, we can use our analytic techniques here just fine. Um, so we need to be able to find V out in this circuit, right? That's our, that's our goal. Um, and 
we can use our op amp um, operating principles, right? Uh, so you can either use the A times V plus minus V minus is equal to V out expression, and then eventually let A become large uh, and see how it simplifies down. Uh, or you can uh, assume that V plus is approximately equal to V minus here, which is to say that these two terminals are effectively connected, okay? In, in which case you have a sort of uh, a new looking circuit that you can write equations for, right? Has anybody worked through this problem to the end yet? Not yet? I was just confused on the way it was written. Like, is V out, is V out, uh, with, because with a capacitor, the capacitor's going back into uh, I plus, correct? Uh, well, yeah, uh, the, the, the minus. So what, what the capacitor's doing is providing that feedback loop, right? So it's going into minus, not plus? It's going into minus, okay, yeah. that's what I was confused on. So the, yeah. so the V out is in respect to R2 and so if you if you use that so let's let's redraw this if we make the assumption that v plus is equal to v minus then we could redraw this um, as being a resistor r1 and it was going into V minus, but we're going to say that V minus and V plus are connected to the same node now. So we'll, we'll draw a dot for that node. Um, R2 is going to be connected to ground from that node now. That's probably excessively long. Uh, and we have our uh, C that goes up and around, uh, but this time, I mean, now we can effectively just draw it straight to V out. Um, yeah, so this is our V, oops, V in. So that is when we make the assumption that V plus is approximately equal to V minus. This is, this is what emerges. Um, and uh, we also have um, um, to keep in mind that that uh, well yeah I'll stop there uh, so this is R2 this is C so the circuit analysis needs to uh, uh, go forth with needing to find V out, right? So you could say, oh, well, V out is just equal to, uh, we got to draw some arrows. They were given in the problem, so we can't draw our own. So down to the right, and then this one is pointed that way, so to the right. Um, so V out is equal to what in terms of C and R2? Uh, well, it's just equal to VR2 minus VC, right? So if you go around that sort of like virtual loop, right? This is, you start here and, uh, well, let's start here. You go down, you have V out. And then you have a gain, so minus 
and then you have a, a drop, so so plus VC. If you move it, them over to the other side, you get this expression. Um, and now you need to write VR2 and VC. Eventually, you want to get it down to a point where you're... Um, so we have a, an actual differential equation involved here, right? VC. So uh, 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 we have our elemental equations. So you've got like R1, R2, and C. Um, and so you've got VR1 equals R1, I1. VR2 equals R2, I2. And DVC, DT equals 1 over C times I C. So we can we can try to uh, solve a differential equation in VC since we have a derivative term on our VC, a uh, derivative of our VC here. So let's try to get R2 out of here using these, maybe using a little KVL, KCL action. And then what we want to see in the end is writing some tau. It's a first order system. It's only one time derivative, dvc dt. Um, uh, uh, so there's a question here. It, you can, uh, you have a v out and you have a vc. You can either write your differential equation in terms of V out, so when you get your solution, it's V out. Uh, or you can just stick with what I usually do, which is just whenever there's a derivative term to start, I solve the differential equation in that. So that's our, our first uh, uh, choice to make. So let's say that you've got dvc dt times some time constant plus one uh, equals um, some some constant as uh, some factor of of c and and whatever else uh, uh, times v n. So you've turned this equation, these equations plus KCL, KVL as needed, and you've brought them all together, and you turned those into this equation. Okay. Now, you can go through your usual solution method, solving the differential equation. You're going to get VC out, right? Um, you are going to be able to also find what VR2 has to be when VC is this, okay, from your KCL, KVL, and or elemental equations. Um, and then you can find what V out is, because you have VR2 and VC, find what V out is, and then you're done. Check. Um, yeah, so when I say simulate in that problem, that was actually left over from when I used this in another class, this problem. But it, it's the same problem. All you need to do is substitute sim simulate for solve. <laughs> you could solve the differential equation using numerical techniques, but there's no need. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the full. Uh, I I had in the problem I asked. Uh, oops, stop that. In the problem I asked uh, for a simulation with an initial condition. So a solution with an initial condition is what's being asked for. I this is a you know. This problem involves chapter two methods. 
and it involves op amp circuit methods. So this is also chapter four stuff and chapter two stuff, uh, kind of getting brought together into one problem. It's kind of a tough problem because it's got all those elements in it. But it is only a first order differential equation, so it's a little bit easier to solve than if I had made it second order, for instance. And this is actually a uh, uh, I don't want to give it away because I think that I asked I think I asked what, what it does effectively um, this is I think the differentiator circuit uh, so if you put in a V in you can get V or V out is essentially the derivative of V in um, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure this is the derivative one. So yeah. So there was that that problem. Um, there's this one is kind of using the op amp analysis we did. We can kind of just apply it here. It's kind of nice. Um, the MOSFET one. You've got a little bit different of a situation. You're using, um, uh, you have a, a, an actual source uh, uh, load here, RS, and then another load out here. So this one modified the, the previous circuit that we did in the class a little bit. Um, and then uh, diode clipping was this problem. I, and, and I'm going to say this, um, I, I gave you guys harder problems uh, in this homework, uh, and more of them, um, in part because I, I think that you require kind of like more practice on these uh, difficult concepts, so I gave more. Um, I remember your quiz grade is really not that significant, uh, you know, do the best you can to do all the homework before, take the quiz. I, I'm not going to post it until a little bit later today because, in part because I have to write the solutions for most of it still, um, but or for like two thirds of it. But I uh, uh, so I'll post the quiz a little later on today, and I'll I'll leave it up until like probably noon tomorrow, uh, so you have a little bit more time because I'm not going to get it up until probably late afternoon today. So if you have evening plans, you can go do stuff. But then in in the morning, take the quiz. And then I'll post the solutions um, about midday tomorrow, and then you'll have them for the rest of the weekend to study. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. Um, for I think the, the solution you posted for the op amp, you posted the solution for uh, linear graph. How do you feel about using that? Yeah, no, uh, so I. This was from a problem that, that that was the same thing where I was using it from a previous class. We haven't taught we haven't taught linear graphs yet, so don't don't worry about them. Uh, the the equations are the same though as the ones that we've been using. So I might call them continuity equations or compatibility equations in the in the solution, but th those are just um, KCL and KVL. So the solution is essentially the same that I would do it without that terminology, but I probably should update that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Anything else? Yeah, I accidentally posted some of the solutions to this homework too, which was not intentional. Uh, I don't know what happened. Something broke in my code and part of the solutions got posted. So uh, I just left them up there because some people had them already. So I was like, ah, oh, whatever. So, But I don't know if they're numbered properly. They don't work for your eyes, so I don't know. I 
potentially they're numbered properly, they're probably numbered incorrectly. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, I, uh, somebody was like, have the solution, and they're like, yeah, this is just in the notes. And I was like, oh, well, something, something went wrong, but whatever. It's cool. I don't, I, I don't, I don't really care that much. People who, like, have last year's solutions, some, like, you know, some of the homework's the same. So, like, you know, you might have the answers to them, but it's not really the point is not to, like, have the answer, so. Helps you on the quiz, assuming your friend from last year got it right. Uh, but, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that this year, uh, that doesn't mean that you're going to get anything out of it, so. All right, so other questions? Can you draw a problem at us that you maybe would look at pushing towards the test and just do the problem at all? Just um, I, I mean, I, hmm. I'll, I will make up a problem and work the problem that uses some, something. Yeah, something that it Yeah, uh, so it's a tall order. I'll, I'll come up with something that's not comprehensive that is maybe, I feel like my sense is that people were tracking with the chapter two stuff, solving the differential equations, KCL, KBL, and then impedance came and things got a little shaky. Uh, uh, and then uh, the nonlinear stuff is like also like, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll make up an impedance problem. How about that? Uh, uh, it doesn't really, I can't really incorporate that with the nonlinear stuff too, but I think I can come up with an impedance problem uh, off the top. It's not, not too shabby. So um, let's say we've got a voltage source. Um, and let's say that you connect it up to, uh, uh, say, a resistor, R1, and you connect it to a, um, maybe we'll split it, maybe a capacitor here, um, excessively tall circuit, um, and then Let's put an inductor here, and let's take this output and put it across a load. So like R2, C, and L. And let's say that we want to know what the output voltage is across R2. So uh, we'll say it's a sinusoidal input that we can express with a phaser. So let's say it's a uh, uh, do you guys want symbols or numbers? <laughs> symbols. Okay. Let's do A, E to the J, phi. So, I need to move this up my page here. So this is um, maybe the problem given, and we need to know V out. In steady state, we only care about steady state. We don't care about the transient response at all for this problem. So we need to find V out. So let's do first our uh, uh, sign convention. So that's our step one, right? Sign convention. So 
we can put arrows whichever direction we want on each element. So let's do those. And so that one's, oh, that was circuit diagram, arrows, that was two. Okay, three was we're going to do our uh, uh, elemental equations, right? Elemental. So we have four passive elements. Um, let's do uh, R1, R2, L, and C. So we've got the elemental equation when we're using impedances. It's always the same, right? Uh, it's always generalized Ohm's law or VR1 equals IR1 times ZR1, right? VR2 is equal to IR2 ZR2. VL is equal to IL ZL. And V C is equal to I uh, C Z C. Great. Um, we should also write what each impedance is, right? So Z R one. Do you guys remember? It's just R one, yeah. Z R two is just R two. Uh, L so Z L is equal to J omega L in rectangular form. And uh, ZC is equal to 1 over uh, 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 omega C. And I, I'm, there's a negative J in the numerator. So um, one way to write it, I guess, is negative J times 1 over omega C. Great. But remember, we don't plug those in, right? It gets nasty when, if we plug it in early. We want to wait. So uh, let's do step four, KCL. Um, we look at this. Two nodes look very promising for KCL. So uh, this first node is going to say that I R is equal to IC plus IL. Everything in equals everything out. So IR equals IC plus IL. Um, and this one over here is going to say IL. So nothing's going to flow out of this, this uh, probe here. It's just open, right? So, so all of the current going into this node is equal to all the current going out of this node. So IL equals IR2. And we are to step five, KVL, which um, let's look back at our loops here. So we've got two loops that make sense. We could also look at this as a sort of virtual loop. So V out is equal to VR2 is what that one tells us. Uh, these, these loops in here, let's run those quick. So the VS is equal to VR1 plus VC. VS is equal to VR1 plus VC. And the other loop says that uh, VC is equal to VL plus VR2. VC is equal to VL plus VR2. And we can also write here that V out is equal to VR2. It's the most natural place for it. And then finally, six, we would need to solve for V out. The algebra could get a little bit messy, but it's we've got, let's see, we've got one, two, we're going to ignore this as an equation because kind of like an extra one. Uh, so V out is equal to VR2. Let's just 
ignore this equation and just solve for VR2, which we know is just V out, okay? So, uh, uh, so we got two equations, 2KVL, 2KCL, four elemental. So we have six equations and we have, uh, uh, let's see, we're missing, we're missing some equations. Um, pardon? Yeah, we can write that loop too. Uh, I'm just, I'm wondering if, so that's one more equation. Um, I suppose we could also write, yeah. R1, R2, so there's four elements. I need, oh, this is, there are four of these. Yeah, I don't know, I just can't add, apparently. Uh, 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 there are actually, there are already four, so there are four to two KCL, two KVL, that's four, plus four elemental equations, which makes eight. Eight unknowns, eight equations, I don't know why I couldn't add before, but now I can add. So uh, uh, we have eight equations, eight unknowns. We can solve for V out, which is equal to VR, blah, blah, blah. But I, you know, I, another approach might be, so you could do this, go through the, you know, algebra, and it gets kind of messy, and then the phasers, you got to plug in your impedances. Um, but another way we could go is we could try to transform this into a voltage divider which works for impedances too. The difficulty we're gonna run into is we've got this, we've got this middle split here. So uh, we, can't, we can't simply naively apply a voltage divider because we can't access the voltage over here from the source. But we could um, transform this into a Thevenin equivalent and then we would have a voltage source and three series impedances to which we could apply a, a voltage divider rule. So I think in, in this problem it's probably six or half a dozen, probably doesn't matter. Uh, uh, but you could do that approach too. So whatever, if you're feeling tricky you could go with a Thevenin equivalent and then a voltage divider. But if you're not feeling tricky, uh, I think just using the general method is fine. But be aware of the voltage divider circuit. I mean, that's a really great thing to have on an exam because you, it doesn't take much work, right? There's like this whole long process you could use to solve this problem, or there's the voltage divider, which is practically just in your lap already. So don't put your head down and just go when you see a problem. Step back and try to think like, is there a voltage divider uh, uh, I could use here? Um, is there some way to get to the end without going through all of this process? So. All right, so have a good weekend. Uh, don't forget to take the quiz. Remember, it's gonna be up this afternoon, late afternoon, and then uh, be open till the morning.